Welcome to Cage Minds, Micah Frankel, and we got a great interview in store for you today. I am joined by the world champion. You can see the title belt right there, Kai Stewart, BKFC, featherweight champion of the world. Man, I feel honored and privileged. This is like the third time in three months you're giving me an interview. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, it's always good to come on. Uh, media is my uh, absolute favorite thing to do um in the sport so as as much as i can get keep it coming keep it coming we appreciate you champ last time i taught you a lot going on there was a lot up in the air i'm sure that the contract because of such a big event there were so many fights announced at one time how far out was your fight was this a done deal you and hd how long ago had you known before it was revealed to the rest of us uh, I knew about 30 minutes prior to the Ariel Helwani show. Um, that's uh, when, when everything kind of came to fruition. I got a call from my management and said, hey, you should watch the Ariel Helwani show. Your fight's going to be announced. I was like, OK. Um, and then uh, but yeah, you know, uh, it wasn't ideal. I usually like to have about that uh, seven to eight week camp. I think we were just under six weeks. Um, that I knew, but I've, I've been in camp uh, since end of September because they gave me that uh, notification about that win for November 3rd or whatever that event was. It was either November 3rd or November 5th down in Orlando. Um, so I was, I've been training, uh, so no big deal, but you know, I, I figured out, I learned about my fight damn near the same time as everybody, you know? Okay. So last time talking to you on Kaylee and Micah, uh... Everyone's throwing all this hate and heat at you. Like you're ducking and dodging people like, like Kai Stewart's <laughs> in a business suit and you're walking into Philadelphia there in front of Dave. And you're like, this is who I want to fight. This is how it's going to go. That that's the narrative that everyone was trying to feed. And, and now it sounds like, was there any negotiation? Was there any talk of names? You're telling me that they announced <laughs> it. And then you're talking about signing a contract. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it went. Um, I will say that I wanted to fight that win because I truly believe even now that he's a tougher opponent than Howard Davis. That's why I went after that win. Uh, bare knuckle wanted to give it to me because, uh, before my last fight during the, the buildup, uh, uh, during the spotlight, it was, uh, Kai Stewart, not afraid to call his own shots. So they were trying to run with that narrative, you know, where I'm calling my own shots. I'm calling the toughest shots possible. That's why I hate the you're ducking people narrative. You're ducking this guy. You're ducking this guy. No, I'm fighting who they're telling me to. However, give me the absolute toughest person because with the toughest person comes the bigger payday. Um, and I'm getting paid a little bit less to fight Howard Davis than I was that win. So what does that tell you? <laughs> Were you surprised? Were you surprised that the announcement wasn't that, that it was Howard? Did you think that there had been do you think it is some contribution to all the heat that was produced? Well, when you and me were there live in person and then he jumps on our show, he's on other people's show. Do you feel like that kind of pushed this fight or do you think that just didn't want to fight you? Where, where do you think everything fell apart from the Dat fight and led to the Howard fight? So first and foremost, I think the fight didn't happen with Dat because he was being a little baby about money. Um, that's not confirmed. That's totally speculation. Um, Dat straight up said to my face that he wants to fight me, that he was going to sign a contract. Um, with that said, none, none of us fighters know what the other fighters are making. So uh, there could have been a contract dispute, and that's why uh, Dat didn't get the fight. Um, last I heard, uh, Howard Davis wasn't going to get the fight because he refused top five opponents. Um, and then all of a sudden, Shaquille O'Neal posted out Howard Davis – and uh, then we get to fight each other. So I, I think it has everything to do with whoever his management is. Um, reached out to Shaq or Shaq's management. Uh, the, Sha the Shaquille O'Neal page posted it. HD is not Sha Shaquille O'Neal's favorite fighter. You can go on there and see that Shaquille O'Neal doesn't even follow Howard Davis. So that whole entire thing was a paid for fucking post to try to entice bare knuckle. And now Howard is getting something that, you know, I don't think he really wants to fight me. I, I, I think that it's all just a show. And the only reason he is fighting me is because this thing's involved. Um, 
I don't think he'd fight me any other time. I don't think this is a fight that he truly wants. I think it's just a fight that he needs because he he's pretty desperate and had to beg for a title shot. <clears throat> Are you happy, though, that there's a date? It's on the table. You get to defend the title. You get to get back in there. There's been just so much time waiting for the promotion and all these gears turning. It has to be good to know that you get to get back to doing what you do. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't care who I'm fighting. As long as I get a chance to, one, be better than I was my last fight. And for two, I get paid. And three, I get to just inch my myself closer to superstardom. All I need to do is be in front of a camera and show how hard I freaking work. Win, lose, or draw, I really don't care as long as I get to compete and I get to show who I really am, you know? Um I'm working my absolute ass off. Bare knuckle is such a volatile sport um, where you never know what's going to happen. That doctor can step in at any single given moment. Nothing's going to deter me from greatness. Um, so I, I don't care who the name is. I'm not afraid of Howard Davis. Uh, I there's I, I actually have more nerves leading up to Louie than I do against Howard. Um, Louie, there's a lot on the line. Down, down there, it's like, it's just another fight to me. Um, we, we just heard uh, Volkanov, Volkanovsky speak on it. Whenever I don't have a fight in front of me, um, it, it's kind of mind-boggling. And I, I kind of fall into, um, I wouldn't say depression, but I definitely fall into like a mental, a, a little bit of a mental hole because I'm wired to compete. In wrestling, for example, we wrestle 200 matches a year. In fighting, this is my second fight of the year. Um, at my highest year, I had eight fights. So it was like, I need to stay active. And, you know, Howard Davis is just another body. Are you surprised after June, after winning the title, that it <laughs> took this amount of time to get something secured and to get you back in there? I wouldn't say I'm surprised. I'm more or less, um, I'm so early in my career. Um, I've averaged five fights a year since I, I began back in 2019. So it, it definitely was hard for me because, you know, I reached this pinnacle and then it literally just tanked. I wouldn't say tanked because I'm doing very, very well, um, but it slowed my career. Um, it was kind of like I stopped right dead in my tracks um, after one fight halfway through the year. Um, so, no, it doesn't surprise me because uh, it took me a while to accept it. Uh, as a champion, you don't have to search for it. You know, you get to breathe. You get the champion courtesy where, you know, you get a couple months off. You get to go um, to, to Rick Ross pool parties. You get to go do all this kind of fun stuff. Uh, it, it, it was just different just because I'm, I'm used to competing so many times in a year. But, you know, um, the more I thought about it, the more it settled in, the more it was, I was, I'm grateful for it. You know, I got to hold on to the belt for six months and literally just, I worked on my craft and, and just kind of worked into it. And then, uh, the second I got, I caught wind of a dat win fight in November, it was straight grind. So I've been grinding since then. Um, and you know, it's, uh. It's great being the champion. You know, it's been a breath of fresh air, but we're I'm definitely not satisfied. I, I'm ready to go. I know you're a MMA fan first off, because Bare Knuckle <laughs> is a new sport. So I'm I'm sure you've heard the theory before from Joe Rogan. We watch so many guys go through the ultimate fighter and then that time between filming the show and the actual finale, they get that hardcore time to really train. And because they got a little bit of money, you don't see them working a second job. And you hear Rogan all the time talk about, well, these guys have become this great a martial artist training part time. Look at how they're exponentially growing when they're able to do it full time. Uh, how much do you take advantage of that theory also? Because now in your position as the champion and so young, you're really able to take advantage of these peak years of soaking in all this knowledge. Yeah. Um, I totally agree with that. Um, I will say that, you know, a lot of people, they get money and then they tank. They, they think that they don't have to work hard. Um, I'm in this business for money. So um, I, I'm in this business for longevity of money. I, I don't want to be in this sport forever. So I I'm try, I try to be as frugal as I can. Every, every dime that I've made has just gone back into living expenses and training expenses. I, I have uh, Native Grown. They, they, they are my biggest sponsor. And because of them, I'm able to not 
I don't work a job. I, I do help my coach uh, here and there uh, doing drywall um, to make sure he's helped out and he's getting his work done, but I don't have any obligation. I, I, my, my life is training. I, I, I wake up and that's the first thing I think about is training. So, um, I've definitely grown exponentially. And that's another pe thing that all these guys need to realize. You watch Howard Davis's fights. He, he hasn't really grown that much. You know, he's, um, he, he looks great against these cans, but his last three fights have been nobodies two two of which didn't even have a single win on the record. Um, so it's like, yeah, he looks all good. My fights have gotten consistently tougher and you're seeing just a different part of me. And I, I, I attribute that directly to being able to focus 100% on my, on my craft. With the sport being so young, how do you keep growing? How what do you look at and how do you invent new ways to not just stay with the curve, but you're a champion. Everyone's hunting you, so to stay ahead of that curve. Yeah, you know, uh more most of it just comes at I wanna grow as um as me. I I I look at some of the greats. We got Lorenzo Hunt, we got Palomino. Uh, Dad Wynn is actually up there um, that I've I've really tried to just I, I pick and choose, man. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'm one of the best clinch fighters in the game right now. I, I attribute that to my wrestling background, my my Greco wrestling background. Um, the sport's so new and I'm so young that it gives me the opportunity to be one of those greats. You know, I've mentioned before in interviews, John Jones has won. He won his first UFC title at 23 years of age. I won my first BKFC title at 22 years of age. Um, so, I, you know, I, it's still I'm still way too young in my in my craft. And I know for a fact I have so much growing to do. But, you know, being a front runner, that just gives me the opportunity to really try something new and, and really um, f force myself to be different than everybody else. And, and all that takes is a bunch of uh, a bunch of film study and, uh, you know, work with my coaches. Uh, a lot of people in this sport, they focus on, obviously, it's bare knuckles. So they, <laughs> you see insane things, punching walls, punching poles, punching hammers, and taking the bare knuckle fight into the aspect of you want to emphasize your clinch game. How much do you work on hand strength to be able to really grab that guy, to rip that head down, to be able to get those kind of grip strengths more than focusing on smashing your hand to build up the bone density yeah you know i don't do much of that because i don't want arthritis by the time i'm 30 um i do think a lot of those guys that are just punching things to punch things are um are long-term hurting themselves do i think that it does something right up front absolutely i think you'll get used to punching those hard spots um you know a lot of it is uh I've wrestled for years and wrestling is right here. We're right here the whole time under hooks, over ties, you know, we, we do all this shit and uh, it, it just naturally built up over a 17 year career. With that said, shout out Dylan Lemery with DL training. Um, he's been uh, really helping me refine and do sports specific exercises. A lot of that is my forearm grip strength. Um, and you know, a lot of that will, will help me keep that fist. Um, it will help me. We can't grab wrists, so we can't like it. That's not helping me, but in terms of like crooking people's necks, um, it, it, it's going to really, really help. Uh, I don't do anything drastic with my hands. Like I said, I, I don't want any long-term injuries. Um, and yeah, mo most of what I do is, is geared to, um, get to that, uh, you know, well-rounded, the perfect fighter because eventually I will do MMA again. Now I don't want bare knuckle to think I'm going to dip out on them because I have a lot more world titles to win. So I'm here for the long haul, but you know, I'm a wrestler first, I'm a wrestler first and there's no wrestling in bare knuckle. Um, so eventually we'll see me back in there. And so everything that I do is gearing me towards um, being just the well-rounded perfect fighter. Do you look at yourself as a fighter, a martial artist, like how do you categorize or an athlete? Like how do you categorize who you are in this athletic world? 
Yeah, man. I, I'm a businessman first, you know, you, you got to make that money because our brain, like we have to just, we have to be real. And I don't, like I said, I don't want bare knuckle or anybody thinking that I'm trying to leave the sport early. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm here for a while, but in the end, it's like, I don't want to take brain damage. I, I started my college career. I wanted to be a doctor. Like that's where my, where my, uh, my brain is at, you know, I, um, I'm smart enough to do so. I, I have the intelligence and the, and the drive to do anything I want in this world. So I don't want to ruin that by taking too much, uh, head damage. So, um, business first, I'm trying to stack that money to where I'm, I'm set up just in case anything bad happens. Um, but from there, I, I just, I'm an athlete, man. Uh, I'm an athlete and I'm only in competition with myself. Yeah. I ha I'm going to have people across from me, but if I'm not better, if like win, lose or draw, as long as I'm better than my last self, I, like I'm, I, I'm okay with it. I, I can accept everything as long as I'm working as hard as physically possible. And, you know, I've done that. Oh, are we here and how do you have that belt behind you from talking about med school was the initial attempt i mean th that's not <laughs> one that i've heard from a lot of bare knuckle boxers let let me let me one up you on this one i've never been in a street fight outside of the ringer cage either i've never did i've never been there uh never i've never been in a schoolyard brawl never been in a schoolyard fight um I'm, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm a, I'm a compet. I guess, uh, uh, to answer your last question, you know, I'm a competitor. Um, I don't care if we're running. I don't care if I'm playing video games. I don't care if I'm fighting, uh, is a lot like I'm going to compete. We're, we're, we're competing not only with myself, but you put somebody next to me, it's that drive to be better. Uh, it's that drive to be at the top of the food chain. Um, you know, and a lot of my career can, comes down to business and, and my ability to sell myself, sell tickets to the events, um, because I, I did my first MMA fight just kind of as a, hey, we need a short term replacement. One of my high school wrestling coaches um, was a coach at an MMA gym as well. And uh, after my senior year of high school, I was kind of in a in somewhat of a depression. I, I lost my last high school match ever. I lost in the state finals. I got second place. Um, and you know, that hangs heavy on people. Like even till, even today, um, I, I think back to that second place and I'm like, I have to be better. Um, but he knew that. So he said, Hey, there's this four and O guy, or he might've been three and O three. There's this three and O guy. Um, do you want to take this fight on two weeks notice? I went to the MMA gym for that two weeks. I learned how to keep my hands up and I learned a one, two, three combo. I jumped in, I lost by split decision. But I also sold like ten thousand dollars in tickets to a like a low level local promotion. So that was kind of the start. And the promoter called and said, "Hey man, like you can make a career out of this without even going pro because you, like like he was just trying to entice me. Obviously, the the goal is to go pro. But he said, "Hey, you just made this ticket commission for your first fight against a stud, and you had no idea it could have been Kimbo fucking Slice, you know." Um, and you know I. <sighs> It's just one thing after another snowball effect. Bare knuckle ended up in Montana. We go back to ticket sales. They were looking for a ticket seller to put on the card because uh, they were like two or three weeks out from the event and their ticket sales weren't good. And then here, here I come. I sold the last couple of tables that were there. Um, I sold a fuck ton for the stands. And uh, once I did that, bare knuckle was all over me. And now we have the champion here ahead of his defense. Do you feel like Howard Davis is a good boxer? Yeah, yeah. And I, like I said, I, I respect Howard Davis as a fighter, um, but I, I only really respect him as a boxer. I, I He's not a brawler. Um, he, he will struggle. He, str well, he struggles with pressure, um, but his boxing's solid, but he's, he's fairly one-dimensional. One he's got flat feet. He's, he is starting to use his range, but you know, in bare knuckle boxing, the range doesn't matter if we're gloved boxing, we have an entirely different fight on our hands, you know, but you know, once I'm in there, once I start getting that pace, I put paces on people and it doesn't matter what happens. Like I'm going to end up on top. I'm a shark in water and I'm there to drown him. How does the wrestling game 
play into the bare knuckle game. I'm guessing that there's a, a part of the physicality, the weight, the guys aren't used to just that effort, the pulling. It wears you out doing something that you're not used to and you're tugging on guys, pulling them, and then punching them. It, it sounds grueling to me, and I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, so Howard Davis, um, in wrestling terms, I'm going to call him Mr. Slick Dog. He tries to slick dog people, and usually slick dogs, they get in there with a grinder and they struggle because he's going to be looking for that one or two punch knockout, that two, three punch combo. Um, that's going to put me out. And I'm here to tell you, he's not going to steal my belt sitting on his back foot. He's not going to do it. Um, and so we get past that slick dog. Wh what is he going to do? Wh what are you going to do whenever I'm just on top of you the entire time you feel that weight? the entire time i will be moving forward the entire time two minute rounds is not a lot to me like i i've wrestled so wrestling is two minute rounds and in wrestling i'm going a hundred percent the entire time i don't feel out i'm there grinding on people's necks and i'm there pushing in bare knuckle you you give like 10 15 seconds then you can kind of you, you can look at it you can look where you need to go and then you're back in there um, and box boxers struggle with that. And you, you see it time and time again, uh, these boxers come in and they struggle because it's not bare knuckle boxing. It's bare knuckle fighting. So, uh, you know, I hope he's ready. I really hope he's ready. The card is huge. There's <laughs> six major fights on there. Is this something that excites you being on a card that's <laughs> this big? Yeah, and you know, I, as much as I would have loved that Orlando main event, uh, this is this is special to me because they, like I went to BKFC forty one down in April in uh, uh, Denver, and whenever Conor McGregor walked in there, my like he was arguably one of the reasons I said yes to my first MMA fight. Um, just his swag, his uh, the his ability to make money, um, the, being on the microphone, ch the chatter. Um, so seeing him come to an event that at the time they had announced my BKFC world title. So like I was next in line for a belt and he comes marching in and then he's holding one of the belts in the ring. That same thing could happen at this event, you know? Um, and there's even bigger names on this event. So I'm really, really excited. And, and first and foremost, I'm very grateful for David Feldman for believing in me, um, who put me on that card. Uh, I do think that we're on that card because of me. Howard Davis is, uh, he's marketable down in Florida. I, I truly believe it as a grand scheme of things. Um, I'm going to be way more marketable in the long run. And uh, all I got to do is win. All I got to do is keep winning. And uh, I like David Fel I will be David Feldman's boy here. Uh, he will, I will be his poster child, but I just, I have to earn it and I know I have to earn it. And that's what I'm there to do. And, and how hard do you see the business side real quick of you can look at, heck, there's a fight on this card, Jimmy Rivera, Jeremy Stevens. That's some huge names. They're not in the rankings, though, and we're, we're trying to get the rankings. These guys, there's some really good bare knuckle fighters in those rankings that deserve their opportunities. How, how much of a conflict do you see this in the business side of, hey, guys, I'd rather get the money, but but I know there's these contenders stacking up. <clears throat> I wish Stevens and Rivera were fighting at my weight. Uh, those UFC fighters, they like to get paid. Well, they like uh, Feldman likes to pay them. Um, and, you know, they're all on the tail end of their careers. And they like we need the young guys to have those opportunities. So uh, I would be okay with them jumping the line. Uh, I do think that if guys in my division decided to fight each other in the top five, like Howard refused to do so, I, I think that they'll all earn title fights, but in my opinion, Rivera and uh, Stevens, winner of that fight, like they've earned a title shot. So bring it. Like, let's get those big names. Um, I like, I fought to, to earn my title shot. I fought, um, who did I, how did I forget his name? Rusty Crowder uh, on short notice because Jack Claffey pulled out of the fight that we were going to fight against each other. He was ranked number two at the time. And I fought him on relatively short notice and I earned my title shot. Um, Howard Davis fought Louis Lopez, lost Louis Lopez, lost his shot at the title. Hasn't fought anybody in the top five since then. 
So it's like, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Howard Davis. I do think that he is a contender. I do respect his boxing. I do respect him as a fighter. But it's like to give the rankings some credibility to to uh, give our division, which is stacked. Like there's a lot of tough motherfuckers in this division. They need to fight each other, man, to know who truly deserves this shot. Um, and and I welcome all cha- I, w- I welcome all challengers that deserve it. I promise I'm gonna let you go, Kai. But the last thing is no hostilities. Like this is all business fighting, Howard. I know that you guys had the interaction around me, and he has said almost everything he could to make this fight happen. And you can't blame somebody for doing what it takes <laughs> to sell the fight. But is there any? Has it got hostile? Has it got past business to personal? Not at all on my end. Uh, everything is personal to Howard. We we've seen how uh, quickly. He got upset on my on my very 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 minuscule comments to him. Um, I said you should uh, fight a top five fighter, or you can't even fight yet because he has a fucking cast on his hand. Like, why are you talking shit and you have a cast on your hand? Um, and and that bugged him really bad. Um, Howard Davis is also still bugged by his loss to Louis Lopez. We saw him and Brian Duran get into it. I think everything is hostile on Howard's end just because he he has a little temper. He uh. He, he can't control his emotions, and I do think that that's going to play a factor. To me, this is all business. I'm like, it, yes, I'm competing against people in my division. Yes, I'm competing with Howard Davis. But in the end, I'm just competing with myself. I have nothing to prove to anybody but myself. So as long as I'm in there working my ass off um, and I give everything my all, there's absolutely no hostility. Um, and, you know, I, I just I do respect everybody in the fight game because anything can happen at, at any moment. But you know, I'm going to see myself on top and I'm going to hear good old Jeff Houston, my boy say, and still. So, um, we're ready to go. Well, I'm super, super ready to go for this fight. With all the cool parties, all the, all the great <laughs> rappers that you got to rub elbows with. How many <clears throat> different guys did you tell me I'm walking out to your song for my next fight? Now that I met you, you, you know, um, uh, <laughs> I actually haven't, uh, I, I might be switching up my walkout song um, for this event. Bare Knuckle told me, now I know that Mike Perry is walking out to somebody uh, like a live performance. In our contract, it says no live performances. So I don't really know. Um, I did reach out to a couple. I was going to try to have an Afro man. I know he's not some crazy big name, but he's one of my favorite artists. Uh, and like, I would have loved to walk out with Afro man. I think it would have been epic. I, I think it would have went with my brand. You know, I'm sponsored by native grown, um, 420 golf co catch a high, uh, all uh, King Palm used to be a sponsor of mine. Just everything that I do, uh, you know, kind of revolves around that, uh, marijuana 420 aspect. So, you know, I would have loved to walk out to Afro man, you know, if, uh, the Rick Ross interaction was very strange. I did smoke his blunt. I did like I was with him, but you know, I was definitely out of place. I was actually there with my Jewish friend. Um, you know, we, we were definitely out of, out of place in the best way. You know, we were accepted there. Uh, he handed his blunt off to me. So, um, no shame, but it wasn't like, a Oh yeah. Like come to my fight type of type of interaction, you know, just cause you know, I'm slightly out of place, but it, it was, it was a grand old time. It was, it was an absolute blast. Um, you know, um, if I ever, even though there's the Eminem curse, uh, if Eminem would ever walk me out live, I would definitely do that too, because you know, maybe it's just the curse. Cause the other, the boxer walked out with him and he dominated his fight. So it's like maybe you have to have an Eminem live performance in order to get rid of the curse. You know what I mean? Right. If you could do it like Terrence Coffer, that'd be crazy. Everybody can see what Kai is going to pull out at BKFC 56 on December 2nd, Utah, Salt Lake City. I'll get ready for the first time ever that you guys get to see bare knuckle fighting live in front of you. And it's going to be one of the best bare knuckle shows of all time. Champ, I appreciate you again one more time. So much for taking the time to talk to me tonight. Yeah, absolutely, man. But real quick, are you going to be at BKC 56? Are you heading out? or what's I'm plan? trying to. We're trying to finalize the travel arrangements. I am oh, trying yeah. to get up there live. Still working on a little bit of the sponsorship details to help with getting up there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% know what you mean by the sponsorships. So uh, let me know if you're going to be there. Let's do a live interview. I think it is going to be a good time.
Awesome. It was great getting to talk to you again tonight, man. You have a good rest of the camp and we'll see you up there. Yep. See you soon, buddy.